This presentation introduces the type of intermolecular bonding known as hydrogen bonding. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to recognise or predict where a hydrogen bond could form between two molecules. You should be able to represent that intermolecular bond using a detailed diagram. You should also be able to explain why a hydrogen bond is particularly strong compared to other types of intermolecular bonding. Hydrogen bonding is really a special case of permanent dipole, permanent dipole intermolecular bonding. If you look at the two molecules shown here, you should be able to recognize that both of them will have a permanent dipole in the molecule. And so we could expect that we would get a permanent dipole, permanent dipole intermolecular bond forming between them. However, these two molecules fit the requirements for hydrogen bonding to occur. And so we'll talk about hydrogen bonding as being the strongest type of intermolecular bond between them rather than permanent dipole, permanent dipole intermolecular bonding. So what are the requirements for hydrogen bonding between a pair of molecules? The requirements are very specific and you need to be careful to learn them properly. So the first requirement is that one of the two molecules involved in the hydrogen bond must have a delta plus hydrogen atom directly bonded to a delta minus N, O or F atom. So the, there must be a hydrogen bonded to N, O or F in one of the molecules. It's not enough that the molecule has both of those atoms somewhere, they must be bonded together. If we look at the two molecules above, we can see that both of these molecules fit that requirement. The molecule on the left has H bonded to F, and the molecule on the right has H bonded to N. The second requirement is that the other molecule involved in the hydrogen bond must have a delta minus N, O or F with an available lone pair of electrons. Typically N, O or F do have a lone pair of electrons available so that isn't normally a big decision. If you remember N, O and F are the atoms we said that are most strongly electronegative. So if you want a way of remembering the atoms involved here. You can say that you need an atom which is electronegative enough, NOF, NOF, for the hydrogen bonding to happen. Looking at the two molecules above, we can see that again both of them would fulfill this requirement. Each one has one of the pos one of the required atoms on the left, an F, on the right, an N which will be delta minus because of their attachment to hydrogens. Having established that these two molecules meet the requirements for hydrogen bonding, we need to be able to draw a diagram to represent a hydrogen bond that might form between them. Diagrams of hydrogen bonds involve some very specific aspects, much more precise and detailed than the diagram you might have drawn for a permanent dipole, permanent dipole intermolecular bond. In the exam, a diagram for a hydrogen bond can be worth several marks. So watch carefully to pick up the various aspects involved. We'll start by drawing one of the molecules with a delta plus H that's attached to NO or F pointing out into empty space next to it. I could have drawn either the HF or the NH3 here because they both have the delta plus H attached to NO or F. The choice of NH3 was random. We now need to mark on partial charges onto one of the relevant bonds. Again, any of the three NH bonds here could have been used. I just picked the one shown because it points out conveniently into empty space next to it to draw the other molecule. Next, at this point, it's actually best to draw the hydrogen bond itself 
because this needs to be drawn very carefully at 180 degrees to the existing bond from the hydrogen to the nitrogen. Try as best you can to make the bond angle either side of the H 180 degrees. Just to be on the safe side, it's often best to actually mark on the bond angle. Now at the other end of the hydrogen bond will be the lone pair for the delta minus NO or F in the other molecule. We can mark that in before we do anything else. In this case that belongs to the fluorine in the HF molecule. So we can now add the HF molecule. At this end of the hydrogen bond, bond angles don't particularly matter. It's really just the end with the delta plus H where you have to be careful. Finally, we need to mark on the partial charges of interest in the other molecule. And that's the entire diagram done. Let's recap the essential elements required in this hydrogen bond diagram then. Firstly, you must show the hydrogen bond as a dashed line going between two relevant atoms. So at one end of the hydrogen bond you'll need a delta plus H attached to an NO or F and at the other end you'll need a delta minus NO or F with a lone pair of electrons. Secondly, you must have this 180 degree bond angle either side of the delta plus hydrogen taking part in the hydrogen bond. Thirdly, you must clearly show the lone pair of electrons on the NO or, NO or F facing straight into the hydrogen bond. And finally, you must mark on all the partial charges for the parts of the molecule involved in the hydrogen bond. It's often safest just to mark on all the partial charges you can see anywhere in the molecules involved. Here's another example so you can check that you've got the right idea. We're going to draw the hydrogen bond that would form between two water molecules. You might want to pause the video at this point and have a go at drawing it yourself first. Here's one of the two water molecules involved. You're always expected to draw water in its V-shaped form. We need to mark on the partial charges on one of the bonds. Next we need to have the dashed hydrogen bond at the bond angle of 180 degrees to the existing OH bond. At the other end of the hydrogen bond we'll have the lone pair of electrons This lone pair of electrons belongs to an oxygen atom, so we can fill that in. And now we can draw the rest of the water molecule, not worrying so much about the bond angles here, though it does need to be V-shaped. Finally, we mustn't forget to mark on the partial charges in the second water molecule. I've added in all the partial charges just to be on the safe side. Out of the three types of intermolecular bonding introduced in the AS course, instantaneous dipole, induced dipole, permanent dipole, permanent dipole, and hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonds are the strongest. You need to know that you also need to be able to explain why that is in a simple way. The first part of the explanation involves the fact that there's a large difference in electronegativity between a hydrogen atom and the nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine atom to which the hydrogen is bonded. This large difference in electronegativity makes for a very polar bond. So, in other words, the delta minus and delta plus partial charges involved in the bond are relatively large. The second part of the explanation is to do with the size of the atoms involved. Both hydrogen atoms 
and the nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine atoms are relatively small compared to the other atoms in the periodic table. This means that the delta plus H at one end of the hydrogen bond can get very close to the lone pair of electrons on the delta minus NO or F at the other end of the hydrogen bond. And this allows for a very strong attraction to occur. Finally, here's a question to take away. For the three substances shown, one, two, and three, only one of them will have hydrogen bonds between pairs of its molecules. Decide which one it is and draw a diagram to show a pair of molecules for that substance with the hydrogen bond correctly represented.